Hello, Amish Furniture fans. This is Beth Rice, co-host of the Amish Furniture podcast. We've enjoyed sharing all things Amish furniture with you. We're taking a break right now to work on new episodes and enjoy the holidays, but we won't make you wait long. In the meantime, here's a mini episode about how Amish furniture is finished. We'll be back in the new year with new full-length episodes. Thank you for listening and happy holidays. Hello and welcome to the Dutch Crafters Amish Furniture Podcast. We are your hosts. I'm Milka Rivera and I've been with the Sarasota Bay Small Business that was founded in 2003 for four years. And I'm Beth Rice and I've worked for this largest online retailer of Amish Furniture for five years. So on this episode, we're going to be discussing Amish furniture, wood stains, and finishes. And we promise that it's a lot more exciting than it sounds. <laughs> um, so whether you're thinking about buying Amish furniture, are a woodworking enthusiast, are intrigued by the Amish, or just can't figure out how to turn us off, thanks for joining us. And let's go ahead and get started. Hi, Beth. Uh, hi, Milka. Hi. You know, it's been said by our woodworkers that uh, finish makes or breaks a piece of furniture. And it's true. It is very true. And I didn't realize how true it was until I started working for the company. And I also didn't know how many options there are out there. Before choosing your stain, you probably want to have your piece of furniture picked out. And then you also want to pick out your wood type because stain is going to look different uh, the stain color that you choose is going to look different on different wood types. So you want to have those picked out. Exactly. That's something that we stress a lot here at Dutch Crafters, as you know, Milka. We really stress the importance of working with stain samples because those colors that that you choose for for the wood, they're going to bring out that wood grain and each wood type has a different grain pattern. So, you know, you can get completely different looks on the same wood type with a different color stain. So it's so important that uh, people not be afraid to order samples, you know, play around with them at home, get a good look at them, get familiar with their, their wood types uh, before choosing the stain. Yeah. I mean, there's so many options to choose from that it can, you know, it can definitely feel overwhelming. But as we've mentioned, that's why it's so important to order stain samples. And especially if you are trying to match furniture that you already have in your home, you know, definitely get those stain samples. And as Beth mentioned, you know, calling in to talk with a furniture specialist, they're going to be able to help you narrow down samples as well and find you know, that, that look that you're going for, even if you're not trying to match existing furniture. Right. So I think, um, you know, a few steps to follow when, when you're zeroing in on a piece of furniture is you got to start with that wood type. Once you determine the wood type and get familiar with the grain pattern, uh, then next step is your stain. What stain's going to work to enhance that natural, uh, wood grain pattern? Because that's, one of that's the essence of our our furniture the natural wood it's so beautiful it, you can tell when a piece is made with real wood versus when it is not thank you for the tip because <laughs> a few years ago we my boyfriend and I bought a house and we are in the process of furnish, uh, furnishing it in fact we just got some furniture today but it's not wood Ooh. it's poly outdoor furniture <laughs> <gasps> that's exciting <laughs> but uh, I can't wait till we're done recording this podcast I can break open some of those boxes <laughs> <laughs> absolutely absolutely but you're talking about the grain pattern and um I, I'm one of those people that I think I would definitely, especially, you know, with solid wood furniture, I would want to see that grain pattern. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we have an option where that stain pad or that, that grain pattern may end up getting covered. And that is if you choose to paint your furniture. Absolutely. Using paint is exciting. I mean, if you want to add some, some color, you know, in a cottage style uh, room, you know, where you like a, a, some colored pieces, paint is, is a great option. And then if you want to get into distressing with paint, that's so attractive for rustic style rooms or French uh, country styles. Uh, you can get into paint and distressing and really create a unique piece. Absolutely. There's so many different areas in distressing also. I mean, you can do wire brushing, you can do light, medium, or heavy distressing. Um, 
a lot of the distressing techniques, basically they are man-made marks on the wood. So the, the craftsmen will, you know, go to that wood and make those marks. They use things like, um, um, bolts and screws and saws to, to make saw marks on it. Um, but they will, uh, they will create those in the wood before applying, uh, the stain and, and the, or paint or finish. I think it would be fun to do some distressing with, you know, if you're ever having like a bad day. (laughs) (laughs) I know sometimes they use like little chains and stuff. You just. When distressed, distress. Yeah. (laughs) I like that. Nobody steal that. That's ours. (laughs) Trademark. Right. (laughs) And you know, there's so much that goes into applying the stain and, and, the technique of distressing. Um, there's so much that goes into the process. It's, it's no wonder that, you know, it takes time for the building, the staining and the finishing, because there's a lot that goes into it. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, you talking about the finishing brings us to like that stain and finishing process. Let's talk about that. They sand the furniture to perfection. Um, and then they wrap it, um, to protect it from any dust. And then it goes to the finish shop. Um, There, once it's unwrapped, it's sanded again and inspected. um, And then the stain is applied. And they put the stain on often with those, um, it's like an air spray gun. spray gun, yeah. Yes. And um, the other um, craftsmen that are working with them move in to rub, hand rub the stain because any excess stain has to be wiped off the wood. So they rub it in by hand and um, then they uh, apply the sealer and then it's got to spend some time drying and they usually they have these big areas near it's like an it's an oven area where it will sit and dry it it's often overnight and then it's going to be sanded some more and then the varnish is going to go on top that's that protective coat the catalyzed conversion varnish basically all that is is the coating that goes over the stain color and it's there to help protect your furniture it's got a finished liquid and a hardener um, which is the catalyst. The hardener is the catalyst that gets mixed in right before it's applied. And it's put over top of the stain color to protect your your furniture. And um, it's very fast drying. And again, we have a great blog post on that, you know, that we can link to like in the show notes as well so that people can easily find the information. And we want you to love this furniture. It's an investment. It's going to be a piece that is going to last a long time. You're probably going to be passing it on to someone else in your family. So you have to be happy with the, you know, the choices that you make for the look of it. Absolutely. All right. So in a nutshell, that stains, paints, and finishes for you. Um, But before we say our goodbyes, Beth and I are going to share with you either something that we learned today um, new about stain, paints, and finishes, what our favorite thing about stain is, or we're going to reiterate something that we think is important for customers to consider about stain. So Beth, I'm going to let you start us off. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Um, I'm going to just share what my favorite thing about stain is, and that's what it does for the wood. They just truly go hand in hand. They lift each other up. When you're investing in a piece of solid wood furniture, you know, you really want to bring out the beauty of the wood. And before working with Dutch crafters, I never looked at furniture the way I look at it now, you know, and see the parts that go into it, particularly the Amish made furniture. So um, my favorite thing about the stain is how it brings out that natural beauty of the wood, because that's what we're after with wood furniture. I agree. That's my favorite thing. And you kind of stole mine. Oh, no. (laughs) (laughs) It's all right. I have something else I can talk about. Um, (laughs) I think I just want to reiterate the importance of ordering those stain samples to make sure that you have peace of mind. We definitely recommend ordering stain samples. So Yes. yes, that's one thing I want to reiterate. It was, it was nice catching up with you, Beth. I miss sitting in the same office with you because, of course, we are both working from home right now. Yes, yes. I miss you too, Milka. We just appreciate everybody tuning in. And um, thank you so much, Milka. Yes, thank you, Beth. It was a delight. So if you enjoyed today's episode or if you have an Amish furniture story of your own to tell or if you just want to say hi, leave us a rating and comment or contact us at podcast at DutchCrafters.com. Thanks, everyone. (laughs) 